If you want to learn a special hack that Jesse uses, close attention to the position of his foot on the footboards. Watching me watching a drum cam video on YouTube. You don't need extra baby powder because you're just... This video is for you. If you are new to double bass drumming and want to learn the swivel technique, we're gonna talk about Jesse Bieler's approach right here. This video is also for you if you want to learn a special hack that Jesse uses to perform the swivel technique on his pedals without any extra gadget sheds like baby powder many drummers out there use baby powder to make this thing work and third this video is for you if you just have a good time watching me watching a drum cam video on youtube all right so jesse Bila, drummer for die art is murder let's go Right here, one thing that I would like to add is for the slow stuff, mostly is using a full leg motion. So lots of upper leg, little bit of lower leg involvement. Please pay close attention to the placement of his foot on the footboards. So right now for the slow stuff, his feet are placed around the middle of the footboard. So not all the way to the front, not all the way to back, but the middle of the footboard. And also his feet are not placed on the side of the footboard, inside or outside. It's, they are exactly placed in the middle. I'm gonna be important later on. All right, let's continue. Great posture, sitting up straight. And Jesse is just the second drummer that I ever saw using the Vic Firth wood beaters, the Vic kick beaters. The other one is Steve Smith. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Charge your copy to pedals. Single foot blast beat. Right here you can see a demonstration of the pressure swivel technique, so that's the really fast stuff. And again, pay close attention to the foot position on the footboards. All right, so right here he's using the swivel technique, but this is not like the super fast stuff. So you can see that with his right foot, he's almost not swiveling at all, just his left foot, mostly his left foot swiveling. And you can also see that he's not just incorporating a side to side motion, but also a little bit of an up and down motion like this. <laughs> course extremely tight while still looking relaxed I promised you in the beginning that we're gonna talk about the swivel technique and someone who's just starting out using the swivel technique can start practicing that stuff. Again, I'm just standing on the shoulders of giants. I didn't invent this stuff and I didn't invent how to practice the swivel technique at those high tempos when you're first starting out. Actually, I'm just repeating what Jesse Bila taught at his Drum Technique Academy lesson, which you can find in the Drum Technique Academy membership zone. Link is below as well. So here's what Jesse did when he first started to work on the swivel technique. So in the beginning he started to swivel naturally with his left foot but when he started to really work on that technique his approach was a bit different to most drummers out there. So what most drummers out there advise you to do when you want to work on the swivel is to first start with the regular ankle motion and then start to swivel from side to side. So look something like this. You're first starting with the ankle motion and then you start to swivel side to side. What Jesse did was a different approach for his fast swivel technique. So basically he applied a lot of pressure onto the footboard. So he pushed the bass drum beater against the bass drum head. And then he started to swivel from side to side while still maintaining that extreme pressure. And at one point when you develop the feel for this side to side motion, because it's not that easy actually if you apply so much pressure on the footboard to swivel from side to side. But once you get used to that and you let go of that extra pressure, you will start to swivel at a higher tempo right from the get go. So this looks something like this. Push the bass drum beat against the bass drum head, start to swivel. And then at one point you want to release some of that pressure. 
So when you first start out practicing that stuff, make sure that you practice it with each foot separately. First your strong foot, my case the right foot, then the left foot, the weak foot, and then start combining those two. Alrighty, let's continue. <laughs> So now let's talk about the second thing that I would like to cover in this lesson. I told you in the beginning to pay close attention to the position of his foot on the footboards. For the extreme fast swivel technique, the pressure swivel, he's changing the position of his foot on the footboards. And what he does is the following. For the fast stuff, he's sliding back like this, but also he's moving his feet to the outside of the footboards like that. So basically the middle of his own foot is placed around the edge of the footboard and he's swiveling like that. So if you want to try this at home, slide back on the footboard and to the outer edge, edge, <laughs> to the outer part of the footboard like this and then start to swivel. That's the position where he's swiveling when he's playing really fast. The cool thing about that position right here is that you don't need extra baby powder because you're just placing your foot on the edge of the footboard like that. And the second big benefit of that foot position is that your foot is not gonna swivel all over the footboard, which happens to many drummers out there. If you place it on the edge of the footboard, it's way easier to stay in that place. So try this at home for yourself. Place your feet around the edge of the footboard like that and then start to swivel. One thing that I can tell you from my own experience is that, you know, before I started recording this video, I tried the same thing on my Pearl Eliminator pedals and with belt drive and with chain drive, the footboard tends to move a bit from side to side. You don't got that issue with a direct drive pedal, but with a chain driven or a belt drive pedal, that's kind of a bit of a disadvantage. So it didn't feel that good on the Pearl Eliminators, to be honest, but here with the Charger Copito, this works fine. Alrighty, let's continue. <laughs> He's still looking really relaxed, although that stuff is crazy fast, especially double bass. Yeah. And one final thing about the swivel technique, Jesse is a textbook example for that one, is for the swivel technique at the high tempos, everyone seems to have this winding up motion. So before they start to play, they actually have to prepare themselves and bring their feet in the starting position to start playing the swivel technique. So it kind of looks like he's starting to swivel even before he starts to play double bass, but that's just the winding up motion that prepares him for the double bass part. There, you can see that one, yeah. Now the foot is placed around the middle of the footboard again. Tight. Now the mid-tempo swivel. Ah, that one is important. All right, so there's one big disadvantage that no one that swivels seems to cover when they talk about the swivel technique, but let's talk about this one real quick. As I mentioned earlier, almost every drummer that's using the swivel technique has this kind of wind up motion to prepare himself. Now I spit. <laughs> You all know already that swivel drummers tend to either swivel in or out for the first stroke. So that's the stuff that they store to the mass memory. So example of this one would look like this, swiveling in for the first stroke. Once they repeat this over and over again, this kind of motion, in and out motion, gets stored to their muscle memory. So either they are swiveling in or out on the beat, and they are swiveling in or out of the beat. So right now, if you got a quad fill variation like Jesse had it in this example right here, it would shift the starting point of the double bass run to the off beat. Let me explain. So the quad fill variation that he used right here was four with the hands, two with the feet. 
One big issue if you got the double bass part right after the drum fill is that the first two double bass hits start on the four end and not on the one. So basically the fill would end with two double bass hits and right after that he would continue to play double bass. So basically if you combine this quad fill variation with a double bass run right afterwards then the quad fill variation would end with two kick drums followed by immediate double bass and the double bass motion sequence that starts with a winding up motion would be totally offset. So after watching this video, make sure to check some YouTube videos of swivel drummers. You can see almost in every video that these drummers kind of, they work around this issue by not finishing a drum fill with their kicks. So in this fill right here, you could see that Jesse first played this quad fill variation, but then finished this one with just the hands, no kick drum in there. Let's watch it again in slow motion. But again, this would kind of offset you when you're using the swivel technique and you're used to a certain motion pattern, swivel in on the beat or out on the beat. Again, the mid-tempo double bass swivel, so mostly swiveling with his left foot. Right foot is not swiveling that much or not at all. Cool thing about chess is that it doesn't really matter if it's a slow double bass part, some mid-tempo double bass or the really crazy fast stuff, he's always looking relaxed and totally in control, so I really like that. Maybe at one point we're also going to record a video about his hand technique, which is flawless as well. Now pressure swivel at high tempos, tight, <laughs> not a single mistake or miss hit in this video, awesome. Here you can see the winding up before the double bass, yeah. Awesome, give it up for Jesse Bila, everyone. One thing that I really like about today's generation of metal drummers is that they kind of divide it in two, I don't want to call it camps, but like two approaches. One of the approaches is like highly technically skilled drummers that seemed impossible 10 years ago. Jesse got that approach. He's relaxed at the slower stuff, mid-tempo, and also at the extremely high stuff. He's always in control. He's not looking like he's killing himself. No, he's looking like he's having a great time and it's like extremely tight. The second camp of drummers or the other approach is this kind of brute force approach of metal drumming. So hitting as hard as possible, maybe not as technical and they're not able to reach these extreme tempos, but it's just a different approach. Good example for that one would be Niels Fjellström, for example, who's really powering out every note, hitting extremely hard with the kicks and the hands. So both of these two approaches to metal drumming have their strengths and weaknesses, of course. I personally like both approaches and I really love that drummers of both camps are kind of pushed the limits in each direction which is really cool. Alrighty drumming community, in the next couple of weeks we're gonna record a Q&A video for all of you so if you got any questions you want me to answer then comment below. We're gonna include the coolest or funniest question is Q&A lesson so make sure to comment below if you want to know anything about me, about drumming or whatever, post it below. That's it for today's video, I wish you a great day. Cheers from Vienna, bye bye.